everybody, Dave here. Great to see all of you guys here again. If you're new to the channel, outside of YouTube, I'm actually an actor based in the US. And last week, the Fifine K670 microphone actually helped me book my first ever voice acting job. So let's talk about what this affordable beast can do for you. My reasons for moving over to voice acting right now are twofold. First is the pandemic we're currently experiencing. It inhibits a lot of the opportunity in that job market at the moment. Things are slowly starting to recover. And second is the injury I sustained a month ago. I cannot drive, nor can I walk. So what I can do is talk. And also, I need money. So here we are. Now, this review is going to be broken down into three segments. The first is going to be ease of use, followed by the utility that the microphone can offer you. Lastly, a sound test slash comparison at the end, so you can sort of hear for yourself the difference between this microphone and other microphone sources. An ease of use. In the box, you're going to be receiving a USB cable for the microphone that plugs into the bottom of the microphone and then plugs neatly into any device that has a USB slot like your laptop. And then you can just begin recording. There's no proprietary software that goes with the Fifine. You can utilize any sound recording software you want and this thing's going to work. So ease of use, definitely a thumbs up. I've loved being able to just plug it directly into my Galaxy Note 10 Plus to record sound. I don't have to do anything fancy, nothing special. Plug it in, hit record, and now you hear what you hear. Now, in terms of utility for the Fifine K678, on the very front of the device, you're going to see a mute button that when you initially plug in your device is going to flash green. This green is letting you know that it is recording, but when you press the mute button, it's going to flash red, indicating that it's no longer recording your sound. Oh, and if you're looking for an adapter for your USB-C type device, I'll have a link for that in the description down below. On the bottom of the microphone, you're going to see 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that allows you to listen to the audio while you're in the midst of a podcast session, say voice acting audition or a voice acting job, which is really handy. On the back of the device, you're going to see two knobs, one of which is for the volume output for your headphones, so you can increase or decrease how loud you want that sound to be when you're listening. And the second knob is going to be the volume at which the microphone's going to be recording, so you can dial that all the way up if you really want to crank up the sensitivity on your microphone, or dial that all the way down if you really don't want it to pick up many discrete noises. For myself, for recording for you guys on YouTube, I find that having it just a tick beneath the middle section is typically sufficient. Inside the box, you're going to be receiving an adaptive bit that screws into the base of the microphone and allows you to attach it to any pre-consisting mic stand or boom arm that you might have in your home. I don't have either of those things, but it's nice for the people that do have them and don't want to have to get an entire adaptive piece just to use this with what you already have. So pretty nice. Now for this portion, this actually is a benefit of the microphone but it's something that I've had a little bit of a gripe with. Now, this microphone is incredibly premium feeling, has a nice cool metal touch, it has good heft to it in the hand, and when you shake, you don't hear any rattling. It feels very compact and very premium, as does the stand. It's a nice metal stand. My concern comes in the form of these knobs right here over on the side. You can loosen them or tighten them so that you can adjust the microphone back and forth my concern is that I have to often tighten the knobs very, very tightly for the microphone to stay in place. If I don't tighten it, I suppose enough, the microphone sometimes teeters back and that can be a little bit annoying when you're trying to make sure that this is held in place properly for when you're recording. Again, you can tighten it very tight, but the knobs do concern me. Overall though, the build quality of this in its entirety, two thumbs up, I would say, or like a thumb and like, Ha like a like 1.75 thumbs I would say as a whole this thing feels really good 
Now, full disclaimer, Fifine did send over the K678 to me to test out, but there was no contractual agreement. There was no obligation on my part to say anything specific about the microphone. They didn't badger me to say how great it is, how amazing it is. I've been using it for the past couple of months, ever since the iPad Pro video, and I've actually noticed, unironically, a lot of comments talking about how much better they noticed the audio sounds for my videos, how much crisper it sounds. And well, honestly, I think the results speak for themselves. Let's jump into the sound test and I'll let you decide what you think. Okay, and now you're hearing this from my Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Let me know in the comment section down below how you think this sounds or what you think it sounds like compared to the pop voice in the Fifine. Okay, and now you're listening to my voice through the Pop Voice Lavalier microphone. If you like how this sounds, give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section down below what you think about this compared to the Fifine, which is going to be coming up in 3, 2, 1. Okay, and so now what you're listening to is my voice through the Fifine K670 microphone. If you like how this sounds, give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel and looking for more content like this and tech reviews that we do, I'd consider hitting that subscribe button so that way you can stay up to date. Oh, and for anyone who's like myself and uses their phone to record, I highly recommend the application Wave Editor. It gives you a lot of power and control over your sound in post, give you control for things like your limiters, your noise gates, so that way it sounds more like you're recording in a studio and not like you're recording in your room, like I do. I definitely recommend giving it a try. That's what I used when I submitted my voice audition. It really made it sound like I was in a studio. So if you don't have the money for the sound panels or making a booth, but you still wanna give it that crispy studio sound, Wave Editor, honestly, can't recommend it enough. Give it a try, it's free to try. Now that your ears have listened for themselves, let me know in the comment section down below which one you think sounds best, the Fifine, the Galaxy Note 10 Plus's built-in speakers, or the Pop Voice. For me, using this over the last few months, I feel like this does the best job at capturing my voice. It carries a lot of bass and it makes it feel like I'm speaking into you or rather into your device. And although the pop voice is fantastic for its versatility, it's a lavalier microphone, you can record pretty much anywhere. If you're looking to sit down and really capture the essence of your voice, I feel like this is an awesome bargain. It's in the price range of 60 to $70. It's been compared to the Blue Yeti, which goes for a lot more money. So if you're looking to set up a podcast recording for yourself or getting to voice acting, I have a link for this down in the description down below and Thank you guys for stopping by and hanging out. If you're new to the channel and you're looking for more content like this, I'd consider smashing the subscribe button that should be around here or up there. It might be over here somewhere. Thank you guys for stopping by. May you make it a fantastic remainder of your day. And as always, peace, love, adios. Bye everybody, stay awesome, stay cool. Stay you in three, two, one.